Everyone, today I'm talking about the DaVinci 1.0 AIO 3D printer scanner. Now I've talked a bit about the DaVinci 1.0 3D printer, um, but this, this new printer just hit the market about a month ago and uh, we're selling it on Studica and I'm gonna talk a bit about it and show you a little bit about what it can do and sort of the process behind it. So the DaVinci AIO is an all-in-one printer scanner. So that means that it will both print objects and scan objects. And first, I'm going to go through a couple pictures here we have on our website. So this is the AIO. Got a little bit of a sleeker look about it than the DaVinci 1.0 did. And you can actually see here inside, this right here on the side is one of the lasers. There's two different lasers that scan the object. One down here at the bottom right and one sort of here on the middle left. And so it uses both those lasers and on this table here, it spins the object around. The lasers scan all the uh, features and then it brings that model into your computer. And you can then use that model. So that's how the, the DaVinci looks. If we look at the specs, um, we see it use, fills, uses fused filament fabrication technology. So this runs on the uh, ABS plastic and um, you know, what it does is it basically builds layer by layer uh, whatever object you're looking to print out. Maximum build volume of 20 by 20 by 19 centimeters. Uh, here's resolution specs, uh, single nozzle print head, nozzle diameter is 0.4 millimeters. It can take ABS and PLA material. Um, the scanner information is all listed right here. And then it comes with uh, DaVinci's proprietary software, XYZWare and XYZ Scan, uh, and those programs, all their OS supports listed here. Works even back to Windows XP, which is pretty cool if you're still rocking Windows XP. That's about all there is to it. The printer is plug and play. You literally just plug it in via USB uh, to your computer. You turn the power on and everything is pretty much automatic. Even like the drivers and stuff install with the XYZWare software. So it's a pretty straightforward process to get this, uh, to get this machine up and running. And what I go ahead and do now that I've sort of introduced it is uh, show you the process of scanning an object and printing that object out. All right, so this is the DaVinci AIO. Um, it's decent size. I have a camera bag right next to it. Uh, I don't know, hopefully that's a little bit of a size comparison. So up here I have my LCD screen with my menu options that you can go up and down on. I don't really use these too often, but you know if you're doing some more advanced stuff you might. Inside, we have the scanning bed right there. Um, I was scanning some stuff earlier, so the platform's already raised. This is the print bed, and you'll see it better when I actually get around to printing something. But this heats up really hot, and then the extruder over there at the top right with the caution sign on it, that's where the filament comes out. And then over here on the right, this guy right here, this is one of the laser scanners, and then this is another laser scanner. So what I have is, um, let's look at this guy. So this is a toy, well, yeah, it's a little toy from uh, the TV series Doctor Who. It's called an adipose, and the reason I chose this guy is because if you look at him, he's not very reflective, he's not very glossy, he's like a solid color, and he's a very primitive, simple shape. Um, I tend to find that you know, those are kind of the things that you want to be scanning with this scanner, stuff that's not too complicated. Things with a lot of detail, it's not quite going to get captured excellently. So, you know, I went with this guy because he's going to be ideal for scanning with this printer. So what you do is you basically put them in the middle there, middle of the print bed, and then I go to XYZ scan, I start the scanner, and then we'll see how it works. All right, so I'm inside of XYZ Scan right now. Uh, you can see it's pretty basic software. This program comes with the DaVinci AIO. Uh, you just install it, it's very easy. The drivers actually come with it, so it's kind of an all-in-one thing. Uh, over here on the left, you have a select mode section between auto, light, normal, and dark. This is basically to select the essentially what the coloring is of the model that you're trying to scan. I guess this helps the software to um, you know, kind of scan in a different way or interpret whatever it is you're scanning in a different way. I usually choose auto. I haven't noticed much of a difference between going from auto to light, normal, or dark. 
If you find that you're having inconsistent results, you might want to mess around with these settings a bit. Other than that, we have a scan option, import, rescan, save, print, settings, and about. Uh, not a whole lot in the settings menu. You can calibrate, and the DaVinci AIO comes with a calibration uh, tool, like a physical thing you put on onto the print, uh, or sorry, you put it onto the scanning bed, and it will calibrate the printer for you. Um, for the purpose of this, all I'm going to do is hit scan, and it's going to reposition the print bed. Now, my print bed's already moved to the top of the printer, but if your print bed was not at the top of your printer, uh, it would take this time to basically rotate that guy all the way up to the top to reveal the scanning bed. And then it shows me a little example of how to place your object and uh, yeah, so everything's good on mine. I already, you already saw it in the video I was taking earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and scan. And it's going to give me a progress bar. It's going to show me live and then in progress the data that it's receiving. And uh, during this time, a laser scanning the object, which I'll show right now on video. Okay, so right now the printer's scanning. And uh, I don't want to open the door right now. Uh, supposedly you don't want to open the door while this process is happening. But what's going on is the platform is turning clockwise and the laser is scanning the object and then it will do the same thing in reverse later and the other laser will scan it and then it sends that data to XYZ scan. So this process usually takes about five minutes, five to seven minutes, sometimes ten. Sort of just depends. Um, and uh, once it's done, the model goes on to XYZ scan. You can then save it or print it out. So we'll let this run out and then I'll show you the results in XYZ scan. So my scan finished and here in XYZ scan, I get my object information, which shows me all the dimensions, vertices, faces, and the data creation for my model. I also get this little thumbnail. If I hit OK, I get a bigger picture of that. So you can see my model here. Um, so I notice probably the main thing that jumps out to me is the fingers. Uh, the, the model itself has individual digits for the fingers and those didn't seem to translate too well in the scan. And then kind of on his foot here, there's a little bit of what looks like tearing or something. But overall, it's not bad. What I can do is I kind of want to smooth it out because it looks a little rocky. So I can use the smooth tool over here. I'm going to put it up to like three. So that sort of smooths it out a little bit, makes it look a little nicer. Now you can either rescan or you can save the files in STL or DAS file if you want. So like if I hit save, you can choose STL and save it as something. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go right to the print option. And what this is going to do is it's going to open up XYZWare. Well, it's going to open up this model inside of XYZWare. Now XYZWare is the AIO's proprietary program. Uh, for slicing and printing. So you see my model here in the middle of the viewport. And I have a couple options. I can like scale the model down if I want. I'm just going to reproduce the same size. It's pretty small. I'm hopeful that it won't be that long of a print. So I'm going to go ahead at this point and just hit the print option at the top right. You also see that you can import or export models. So if I have an STL file I want to bring into XYZ where I just hit import, I bring it in and I go to print it. So when I hit print, I get this print menu and it shows me what printer do I want to print to. I can choose quality between normal, good and excellent. I'm going to leave it on good. You can turn rafts and supports on. You can turn on auto repair. Uh, under the advanced setting, you have advanced options for the quality of the model, the supports and rafts for the model, and then you can create and delete um, print profiles, which are basically preset settings for print quality. I'm gonna leave everything default. I'm not, I'm not looking to do anything fancy here. So at this point I just hit print and it will take a few, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna start slicing my model. And depending on your model, like how many vertices, faces, how large it is, this can take anywhere between a few seconds to several minutes. Um, the longest I've had to wait for a slice was probably like three or four minutes. And uh, once it's done slicing, you'll get a window oh, right here. 
So it shows me how long it thinks it's going to take to print. 44 minutes. That's a bit higher than I thought it would. Um, shows me the usage on my cartridge. I've only used 3.5 um, 3.5 meters of my filament out of 109, so I'm perfectly fine there. At this point, what you can do is hit cancel and see what the slicer did to your model. Sometimes, depending on if your model has a lot of issues, the slicer will actually do things to your model that are undesirable. So usually you want to double check and make sure everything's okay. Uh, it's looking fine to me. So I'm just going to go up to the print option again. And I'm going to tell it to print. And I'll show you uh, on my camera, I'll show you sort of what this process looks like. All right, so currently, if I look up here on my menu, uh, it received the job from my computer, and now it's telling me that it's heating the extruder and the platform. Now, the platform and the extruder heat up to like over 200 degrees Celsius. Well, sorry, the extruder does. The platform, I don't think, goes that high. But this process of heating up can take, it's not uncommon for it to take like five or 10 minutes just to heat up all the way and then it starts printing. So it can be time consuming depending on what you're printing. Um, so basically this is the platform right here. And again, like I was saying, normally the platform is down here and then it rises up. But since I was already scanning an object, the platform's already to the top. So now this guy's heating up, so you don't really want to be touching this at this point. That would be dangerous, probably hurt yourself. And then the extruder is where that caution sign is. Let me see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell, but that thing's heating up right now, and that's where the filament comes out of. Now, while this is heating up, what I want to do to prepare the platform for printing, um, well, the first thing you do actually is you want to wipe it off with a cloth. Now, mine's already clean, but you can just take like a normal towel or something and you can dampen it a little bit and wipe it off on the platform. Um, at least according to XYZ's documentation, it's okay to do that. If I'm wrong about that, feel free to correct me, but um, their own manual says that you can take a damp washcloth and wipe down the uh, platform with it. However, you do want to make sure it's dry, you know, you don't want to leave it wet when you go to print something. Um, but the main thing is using glue. So this glue stick came with the AIO and what you need to do, let me, uh, let me get my glue here. Whoops. You need to make sure that you put glue down in the center of the print bed, or at least as close to center as you can, because that's where your object's gonna be printing, and since um, since the DaVinci uses the fused filament fabrication technology, what it does is it builds, you know, it builds layer upon layer, so it starts off in the middle with like usually some kind of squares or circular shape, and then it just slowly builds up on it layer by layer, so you need the glue there to make sure that the bottom layer sticks so that you don't end up with stringy filament all over the place. Um, so now that I've got the glue there, that's really all I have to do um, as far as uh, preparing for the print. One other thing I forgot to do is on the AIO, it prints a small starting line over here on the right. So what I usually do is I throw a, a real quick dab of glue on there just to make sure that the starting line sticks as well so it doesn't get caught up in the extruder and cause problems. So um, at this point it's mostly just a waiting game. My thing's ready to be printed on and my extruder and platform are still heating up. So once we get around to printing I will take some video and show you the process. Alright so the extruder's starting to print. If I look up here on my uh, menu screen, it just shows me how much has been built, none right now, it shows me how much time has passed, uh, and then it shows me how much time it thinks is remaining. Now the estimation is kind of like Windows time, uh, it varies, so you just jumped up an hour. You know, XYZ where it told me this would take about 40 minutes, so as this starts building you'll see that number lower itself, um, so yeah, these early predictions usually aren't very accurate. 
So if I actually look in here, my extruder's starting to print onto the middle of the board when you open the door. And you can open the door when you do this, um, but it, it's a lot louder if you have the door open. Closing the door actually does quite a bit for the sound. So you see it's laying down the first layer here. So this process will go on for some probably 40 minutes or so. Uh, I'll take more video as the process gets further along. Okay, so my build's at 22%. You can see I jumped down from 9 hours to 57 minutes. I hop in here. You can see that my adipose is getting built. Slowly but surely. Mm. Alright, so I'm at 45%, 33 minutes left. Here's where my model's at. Alright, so my model's finished printing. Uh, you see that the platform starts to cool down. You can skip this process if you want. I'm going to go ahead and do that just to show you guys. So now the platform is going to lower. Now the big thing here is that I didn't wait for it to cool down, so I, I want to be careful not to touch the platform because it will be really hot. see my model here and what I do at this point is the DaVinci comes with this little scraper which is a lot better than the DaVinci 1.0 scraper this is actually like metal um, so at this point I come up here basically just put this underneath and I just kind of scrape them off Again, my platform is really hot and I don't want to touch it. So, there's my adipose. Get them up here. So, again, what I was talking about, if you look at his little hand here, it's got kind of stringiness about it. Um, overall though, it's not bad. You know, some of the issues with the feet, like in the model, are there. But it turned out pretty well. And then some of the facial features didn't quite come out. So there they are. So yeah, like I said, the main thing is you see in the hands with the appendages and then uh, you see on the face with the eyes and the mouth. That stuff didn't quite translate. Uh, the adipose I created has, you know, looks more like webbed on his arms instead of a distinct arm coming out. But considering how new the scanning technology is, I'm pretty pleased with it. I think it turned out pretty well. Um, yeah, that's about it for the DaVinci AIO. Check it out on our website, www.studica.com, and uh, get some good pricing on it, especially if you're a teacher, you can get uh, cheap prices and discounts. So, yeah, check it out. Thanks for watching.